Crisis report from Canada. As the flood crest of the rampaging Red River bears down on Winnipeg, tragedy knocks at the heart of a great metropolis. One eighth of the city is already four feet underwater. In the western suburbs alone, 6,000 homes are damaged or destroyed, and the river still rises. With some of the emergency dikes already broken, 50,000 volunteers work feverishly to reinforce the remaining barriers. But disaster piles on disaster as fire breaks out in one of the few sections still clear of floods. Fortunately, water pressure is still strong enough to conquer the blaze. On the other side of the city, the turbulent river threatening to engulf this hospital gives ironic emphasis to its name, King George Isolation Hospital. Its patients, some of them Eskimos, are taken to safety by army ducks. Everyone gets away smoothly, including one patient in his iron lung. With the river now at a level of over 30 feet, evacuation is ordered in most parts of the city, and police are there to enforce it, sometimes the hard way, as here when Mrs. Ruby Couch, aided by her son, tries to prevent the transfer of patients from her private sanatorium. Everywhere else, hasty evacuation plans are put calmly into action. Nearly half the population leave the city, as the government urges all but emergency personnel to go north. With rain and sleet pushing the river level still higher, the danger increases hourly. Another few inches and all evacuation trains may have to be stopped. What happens then, no one dare forecast. British help to Winnipeg has been promised by Mr. Antley. That help should be generous. For these people are the same who sustained us with food and money in our time of trouble. Now is our chance to repay their generosity.